Good morning, guys. Yeah, it was a little bit of a harsh day yesterday, yep. Midday and uh, onward. Or actually, from the open to the close, I had like a $5 million swing. One of my largest ever. General, General Motors, everyone. BA, yeah, it, it's setting up. It's a slower type, but it's very liquid, high priced. I kind of like to trade these, but I, I would say maybe next week would be ideal. You think Futu is ready to go? Uh, I think uh, preferably a few more days. man riot i hate this stock uh i probably lost like 1.4 1.5 million on riot alone past two sessions that was annoying man well oh well you win some you lose some <sighs> How come I'm not stopped out of UPSD? Because I wanted to give it a little bit of room. I'm thinking the 10 weekly. It's a small position, so I can I can give it some leeway. Otherwise, if I had a bigger position, I would have uh, probably sold it when it lost the 20 day on this day here. But it's just a really small position. It's like 3% position on my whole portfolio, so I'm trying to give it some room. I'm, I'm working with my on my patience. Working. This is this is how you get used to new things, okay? Slowly, one step at a time. You don't go from day trading to swing day trading overnight. It's a process. I'm trying to increase my time frames. It's a process. You start small, 
get comfortable with it, and then you go bigger. Why did I sell TNA? Because it closed weak. And obviously it's gapping up today. Obviously TNA is gapping up 2%, but it could have gapped down 2%, you know. When you go on margin, you kick out everything that's not acting 100% correct. Man, I got so much positive feedback on my rant yesterday. Yeah, we are all fucking loser non-billionaires. We're all idiots. <sighs> David is not an idiot. David is the only genius in here. What happens with your TNA? I have no idea what happens to TNA, but since I'm not in it anymore, uh, it's not my TNA anymore. No, I didn't take any profits on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people like General Motors. Like, every time I, I start a stream, people like spam at General Motors constantly. Yeah, I'm probably gonna trail my semis with the 20 day. Those are the, you know, I, I try I try to keep the strongest ones, keep sell the weak ones. Obviously, I sold Riot, GBTC, SI yesterday. Even though SI made another higher low, undercut the 50 day, and yeah. Um, so it actually wasn't necessarily a bearish candle. Like a candle like this doesn't necessarily have to be bearish, it can be bullish.
QS. Yeah, it's a piece of shit. It probably belongs in single digits when they actually get a product going. But it was fun while the momentum lasted. It was one of my biggest trades. Both on the long and the short side. <laughs> All right. Good luck, everyone. Oh, my brokers. Wait. <gasps> oh, I forgot one of them. Thanks for reminding me, guys. I couldn't do this without you. I always forget to log in one one of my brokers. What a moron. Guys, you don't have to be smart to get rich. I'm just telling it right now. <clears throat> okay. You're going to ask the questions later. Let's trade now. The helicopter check. Um, mm, I would love to see this thing build more higher lows and then break out of the, that little range and reclaim the 50. Until that happens, there's nothing there. I'm thinking maybe shorting this riot later. Yeah, the large caps are really, really strong. Like the uh, FNGU stocks. Thanks. And mega caps. <clears throat> So GBTC pulled back, but it built another higher low.
NIO could break out, no, br wait, break down through the resistance. Uh, I think you mean support. Riot and GBTC are not inversely correlated anymore. Oh, well, they're not inversely correlated. They were correlated because they are both correlated to Bitcoin. But Riot has decoupled from Bitcoin because it's a piece of shit fraud. Well, it's not a fraud, but it's a hugely bloated. And also, I'm not long GBTC, so... Gold names look good? Uh, no, they don't. They're up on the day, but they don't look good. Silver looks great on the weekly, though. FCX is FC. BT, BT could be a nice short. Uh, uh, it's a, uh, it's it's a small cap. Yeah, I you know be very cautious shorting small caps. Unless they like parabolics. And unless you do it intraday. Too late for TDOC entry? If you have to ask, it's too late. And also, is there a setup there? What's Playboy doing? Man, Playboy is the new market leader. Who would have thought? This is what I love about the stock market. When you're the boomer, boom, biggest boomer stock being the leader. Should I do a deep fundamental analysis on the PLBY group? I'm going to do it um, in uh, 20 minutes. Because we all know what happened to Tupperware after I did deep fundamental analysis on it. It doubled in a few months after. What was the other one I did deep fundamental anal analysis on? GME, did I deep 
do the fundamental analysis. Oh yeah, she and me board of directors, yeah. No! TSM! What's going on? Yeah, I guess NVIDIA was the, the semiconductor bl play. Holy shit. Just keeps going straight up. You had pocket pivot here. And I didn't do it because it was such a slow mover. Instead, I did TSM, which is even even slower mover. What a loser I am. Cohen, um, uh, maybe, I, I don't know. Okay, so Riot is uh, still building higher lows for now. Re-caffeine. What's TNA doing? Okay, it's going lower. Good. The worst feeling in the world is when you sell something and it goes higher. I don't recommend that feeling to anyone. Yeah, Twitter, Snap, Pinterest. Well, yeah. They can go sideways another week. There would be, you know, five star flags in these things. <laughs> you know what? This VAC is actually surfing the 200 day. Not that I think it has any reason to go up. Hmm, that's an alert on it.
Tesla. <clears throat> I'm doing some pre-deep fundamental analysis on Playboy right now, so there won't be any... Uh, surprising things when I do the when I do it on stream Yeah, what's that you doing? <clears throat> yeah, now it's closer to 50 day again. I think it's going to approach a big buy point soon. I'm definitely stalking this thing with excitement. Maybe a few more days and it's going to be great. Yeah, PLL is great setup. Like I said, was it yesterday? Also, yesterday it obviously failed, but it's look at that tight there. It looks great. Yeah, I see it's setting up really nicely. I just want the 20 day to catch up a little bit. Maybe next week. I'm seeing a lot of these kinds of setups. DVAX, very good setup. Uh, I don't know about very good, but nah, I don't know. Looking a bit too random. Okay, maybe. Pattern recognition, if I think it varies from person to person, yes. It's very subjective. It's not an exact science. TNA, good. I hope it goes to zero now, now that I'm out. <clears throat> no, I don't. Wouldn't be a good thing.
Okay, TSM is bouncing off the rising hundred. That's good. Tickers in caps, please. And just posting a ticker is considered spam. We'll get you a mute. But you would have known that if you had followed the chat rules. <clears throat> 80kr. Uh, who posted that? I don't know. Uh, no, I don't. Maybe next week. Uh, MFNC. Uh, I, I I don't know what it is. It's some kind of bank. It's probably not an EP. I, I don't know what the news are in this. MP tightening with higher lows. Yeah, it's surfing the hundred. But I don't. I'm not sure it's a good setup here though. <clears throat> Yala group, yeah. HCMP. Mm, I don't know, it's all over the place. I, it looks pretty decent on the weekly, but it feels like it's gonna break out, pull back, stop you out, and then go. It feels like that kind of a stock. It's all over the place. It doesn't really have a lot of momentum. Well, actually, it does have a good longer-term momentum, but uh, it's a pass for me. It's too thin. Oh, mm. Noko is so good. Sussex, yeah, nice move. That's a pretty decent move in one day.
you don't need to scan earnings for to find EPs. Like I said before, EPs are super easy. Just scan for things that are gapping higher. That's it. Let them come to you. You don't have to look for them. Oh, Riot. I hate this stock. Yeah, I built another higher low and now it's going higher. What's Mara doing? SI. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> TWI. I don't see a setup here. Needs to set up properly. OCGN in January twenty. Yeah, but it wasn't a bottom bounce, it was a flag. Look at this, had a flagpole and then it flagged and built higher lows. It wasn't a bounce setup. Well, it was kind of a bounce setup, but it was a flag, essentially a flag breakout. All right, let's do some deep fundamental analysis on uh, Playboy Group. Let's see if this thing is a good investment or not. About. Pleasure for all. Okay. Makes sense. Let's look at the leadership team. Is this a strong leadership team? <laughs> I'm sorry, but... Sexual wellness operations? This guy is the biggest pervert. Look at this pervert. Wait, 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 wait. I I'm gonna tell you how big of a pervert this is, guys. Look, I can click on all of these guys' profiles. Look, I can click on all of them. But I can't click on him! He's unclickable! That's how big of a pervert he is! 
They made him unclickable. Look at this. They're all clickable with them, except for this pervert. <laughs> oh, too funny. Investors. All events and... Pre Wait, I have to do some pre-pre-research so I don't, there's no funny business involved. No, there wasn't too much funny business involved, but it was really boring. So I'm not going to show you the investor presentation. Let's go to the website. I already did some pre-pre-research. I know which links not to click on, but the men's apparel link was pretty harmless. This is the stuff you can buy. If you're a man, you can buy this, this one if you're a man. Very manly. Looks great. And also the accessories link is pretty harmless. So this is so this is what Playboy is. That they're selling stuff like every other influencer on Instagram. I have to do some more pre pre research. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna throw this on stream. Nope. Um, read the articles. Uh, where are their NFTs? Oh, I'm not gonna show this on stream. Uh, yeah, wait. Uh, I think Playboy Group. Mm. Yeah, let's read up on the NFT because that's why the stock is hot, really, right? Uh, Playboy. Playboy. No, wait, wait. PLBY. PLBY Group. That's their name, actually, not Playboy Group. Yeah, here it is. Uh, there was something on their homepage. If you go to news, here, plan nifty. No, wait, wait. Here blockchain related let's read okay let's not read let's just read the headline partners features upcoming nft art collaborate yep it's a buy it's a buy hey guys you can't go wrong investing in playboy So now we've done the deep fundamental analysis on that one. I'm going to try to do like one deep fundamental analysis per month. Where are their NFTs? I have no idea. I don't know what NFTs are, but apparently they're pretty hot, so... I just, I just can't let go that the chief executive uh, pervert was unclickable. The, the guy of uh, head of sexual wellness. He looked like a pervert and he was unclickable. It's too perfect. What's the Numbla? Where would have been the ideal entry for Playboy? Right here. 
here is where you should have bought it. 1013. That was the ideal entry for Playboy. Don't go where? Where shouldn't I go? All right, let's do a struggle, struggling trader uh, coaching. Let's see, OCG, this is a short one. I'm gonna try to do one per day, no matter how long they are. Let's see, uh, four, five, that means four, four, five. That means 5th of April, right? Here, I, again, like it's, it's super, like this, um, yeah, well, it's a, it's a hot theme. NFT stock. Why is the text gone? There used to be text here. I played it myself on the EP here. Uh, but again, you know, these micro caps, like, especially these micro cap pumps, like, there's no institutional support on these things. Just because they, you know, they, they don't have to, or no stock has to bounce, but there's no reason for these things to bounce off the like the the moving averages because no there's there's no, no fund wants these things it's just retail pump so they, these are better when they surf the 10 day generally not when they're way off their highs and so that, that's an easy one but i see what you see it found support under 20 and started surfing it but it kind of doesn't apply to the micro cap pumps a pump is a pump and they, you know once they once they go down they're probably most of the time they're just dead uh 6th of april oh maybe i should write the guy um this is uh twsn01 uh let's see wait where am i um No, wait, where did the document go? Oh, there it is, okay. Uh, v, uh, yeah, so 6th of April, let's see here. So uh, again, it's uh, like I see what it is, like it's surfing the 50 day, but it's kind of uh, all over the place. Again, a micro cap stock, it's just all over the place. It wasn't tight and uh, yeah, it, it kind of didn't go anywhere. Uh, not sure if it was a good setup. It probably wasn't. It, again, it, it wasn't clean. It's all over the place. Mm, next one, V cell. Eighth mm, of April. Mm, okay. So setup itself, uh, I guess it was pretty decent. Surfing the twenty, building higher lows, getting tighter. Uh, wasn't a bad setup, but it was, you know, bad market. Not not a great market for these smaller cap stocks and biotech stocks. So the setup itself was maybe three and a half star. HIBB, uh -huh. 
9th of April. Uh, uh, like, I see what you see, but it wasn't really a good setup. Like, it's... it's um, Yes, it was building higher lows, the surfing this moving average, taking out a range, but it, it just looks all over the place. Not really the type of stock you want to trade, even though it has the correct ADR and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it, it takes years to see which ones are worth it and which ones are not. Ah, GPRO, 9th of April. Okay, this wasn't a good setup. It wasn't like I would personally have bl well, wanted more sideways. It wasn't a great setup. It was okay, but you know, mediocre. And you know, when you do mediocre setups in a not a great market, in a market that's not straight up, this is what happens. Uh, Tesla. 9th of April. 9th? 9th of April? No, 12th of April. No, never mind. Okay, so that's a five star entry. That's a five star setup. No, he didn't take this one? Oh, he just wanted my. Yeah, it's a five star setup. This is a good one. Been building higher lows. Was really tight. And it was close to breaking out this breaking out of this range on the weekly, so that was pretty much a five star, or at least a four star. But apparently, it didn't take it. Just wanted feedback on it. Uh, TX fourteenth. Uh, let's see here. Uh, again, it's just a random, random, random setup. Like you know, it's just too random. It's kind of hard to describe what's a good setup and not. It's just too random. Like, in a very good market, these types of setups will work, but... The, mm, mm, yeah. You really want the great setups. But honestly, none of these were great setups. They were, th you know, some of them were bad, and some of them were, like, three. Tesla was the only four-star one, I guess. Uh, Zim, first of April uh, 1st of April okay was a pretty decent setup momentum stock pulled back to the rising 20 and this was the bounce off the 20 so it was a good setup um, what well, again actually it wasn't that good of a setup like I personally would have preferred a little bit more sideways uh, but this one worked out worked out obviously but I wouldn't say it was more than three and a half stars. If it had got sideways for another day, it would have easily been a four, four and a half star setup. So th this is what you want. You want to preferably buy them very close to the moving averages, the 10 or the 20 day or the 50 day in cer if it's not a micro cap. And GMBL, I'm seeing his notes now. Yeah, so yeah, like when you get these micro cap stocks, you want them to surf the 10 and the 20 day, not the 50 day. His entry was here. It wasn't a great setup. Um, it was so sloppy before it. But also, you know, like these micro cap stocks, you know, when they get to the 50, uh, it's probably most of the time an avoid. If it's a mid to large cap, 50 day works really well. As well as any of the other moving averages. So that was today's uh, struggling. So yeah, the setups were not really, really great. 
And honestly, we ha there hasn't actually been over the past six w or to eight weeks in uh, like high ADR land, which means micro and small caps mostly. There hasn't been a lot of good setups. And when you don't get good setups, you don't trade. But obviously, for a new trader, it's kind of hard to determine what's a good setup and what's a mediocre. Um, and that's why it's so e important to actually study, spend hundreds and hundreds of hours and look at w what do the patterns look like before a stock makes a big move. You will, you know, re and what type of, like, how do stocks move? You'll quickly see which, which stocks are worth it and which ones are not. Or actually, not quickly, but it, it takes years. It takes years to get good at it. Oh, TSM, I got stopped out of the half size I had left. All right. Got stopped out for a tiny profit on it. Uh, man, if I had done NVIDIA, 31st of March is where I bought TSM. And 31st of March is when NVIDIA also broke out and all the, all the other semis. If I had done NVIDIA instead, I would be richer than I am. Parabolic short in NVIDIA. Um, I think you need to follow the instructions on the screen and understand what a parabolic short is because apparently you don't understand what it is this is not a parabolic it's not even close not even close not even close rblx uh yeah pulled back building higher lows it looks great Uh, grow on 5th of April. Yeah, on 5th of April it was a good setup. I th it was an EP breakout. I think it had earnings or something. Yeah, it was a good setup. Not sure what the news were, but... It broke out of a multi-month range. It's been building higher lows, surfing the 50. And it was tight before the breakout. And it gapped up. And yeah, went straight up for a while. Uh, Shoppy markets are way worse than bear markets. Bear markets are easy. Bear markets are easiest, well, not the easiest uh, markets to trade, but they're kind of easy because there are no setups. And you know you shouldn't trade even if there are setups. And, you know, there's really not many good setups in a bear market. But in a market like this, like we've had over the past eight weeks or six weeks, you still do get some pretty decent setups, but they fail to follow it through the way I would like to. So you end up having a lot of small losses and, and a lot of stocks that are like decent winners and then they turn back down. So it's, it's the trickiest type of market to trade, really. Oh, yeah, TNA. Go lower. I would like, I would love to see I, Russell maybe pull back a little bit more, build another higher low, and then set up later this month and make a big move. Yeah, it's a very, very narrow market. It's pretty much the tech mega caps uh, going up right now. There's not much going on outside of that sector. Or those, not that sector, but those stocks. Like obviously, I do have exposure to them in form of TQQ. And... But the other than that, there's just not much going on at all. I'm going to raise my stop and RK break even. Not going to turn this into a loss because it doesn't look too good actually. It's below the declining 50. Don't like that. Yeah, 
exactly like the the small and micro cap stocks if you even if it gets setups like a lot of them will fail until this Russell starts breaking out and going higher that's that's you know yeah yeah you know something to keep in mind like the big money in micro and small cap stocks and mid caps too is when the you know, Russell goes higher like this when it the 10 day is rising 20 days rising and the 10 days above the 20 day you know in a period like this if you know how to trade you're gonna double triple quadruple your account double if you don't use margin or actually you're gonna double triple your account if you don't use margin and triple quadruple or more if you use margin so you know you want to wait for these types of periods as a swing trader that's where the money is or periods like these right Otherwise, you gotta be super selective and really just only trade the five star opportunities. And if you don't know the difference between a three star opportunity and a five star opportunity, you probably shouldn't trade it or trade it with much smaller size than you would have. Because you have to understand, like in trading, like if you go to a regular job, you're gonna get paid the same no matter how you how you do at work you can have a shitty day get nothing done you're still gonna pay get paid the same that day versus a day where you really do work really hard and get a lot of shit done not the same in trading every day is not an opportunity to make money every day is an opportunity to lose money And the same can be said for weeks and months also. Every week and every month is not an opportunity to make money. It's an opportunity to lose money. Got to be super selective. Well, Russell is significant if you trade micro and small cap stocks. Like, I don't care about Russell that much. I just don't trade those stocks a lot. Sometimes I do, but uh, they're usually smaller sizes. They're usually very liquid. I care more about like QQQs. That's like my index. This is where a lot of the stocks I trade are, or the Nasdaq overall. Like this is what I care about. But most of you, Russell is probably gonna be a bit more relevant. But again, you don't, you shouldn't, you know, base uh, all your decision making on the index. You should look at the individual setups because a good setup will still work out even if the index is going sideways a good you know something with a very strong momentum and very strong catalyst can still work out and make a big move but again you have to be patient you have to be super selective Yeah, QQQs, like the large caps are short term, maybe a bit over extended. Uh, but yeah, as long as we, you know, go sideways or grind higher, I see more and more things setting up like SC, Snapchat, <coughs> Square. Like these things are, you know, if they can go sideways another four, five, six days, so the 20 days can catch up, there's going to be a lot of four or five star setups starting next week. I would say. So I'm not I'm not bearish or anything. Well, obviously I am bullish since I have a lot of <laughs> long exposure. Uh, but I'm I'm seeing a lot of things setting up. A lot of things are setting up. Stuff like Fiverr it looks great on the weekly. And just go sideways a bit more uh, this W I've been stalking forever well actually not forever but this one looks good once it breaks out with conviction it, it could make a big move but it may have to may want to wait uh, until earnings or something Carvana too this thing is in a 
big, big flag, tightening flag. This thing looks extremely powerful. I mean, this thing breaks out. It could go to 400 or something. Or at least 350. Um, this is probably one of my favorite set, most favorite setups right now. Looks absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> Yeah, mom is making me dinner. <laughs> CMG? I love the CMG. Uh, but I don't love the stock. <laughs> this is not a training stock. Forget about it. All right, guys. Uh, I'm done for today. Thanks for joining and see you tomorrow.